Come, come on in. Do, 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 do. Look, I can't tell you the amount of times that I watched, at least live on, you know, when they were airing the episode of The Real Housewives of Miami, because I'm able to watch it on television here in Los Angeles. And the night of, they played it twice. So I ended up kind of like in and out of watching it. But of course, I had to watch it literally for the very first time, fully, completely from beginning to end during uh on peacock so first off i want to ask you guys part of the replay crew and those of you that are watching in the live chat where do you watch real housewives miami do you watch it live on bravo or do you watch it on peacock they just had their season high with like 400 and something thousand viewers shout out to our friends over at tbd they always post the live viewership Streaming numbers, we don't really know unless Bravo or Peacock or NBC Universal wants to share that conveniently for certain shows. But, you know, a lot of people were like, the quality is going to be different if Real Housewives of Miami is on, on Bravo and not on Peacock. I don't know why the quality should be different. It really shouldn't. So far, the quality hasn't really made a big difference to me in, in regards to what I'm seeing on Peacock versus what we're seeing on Bravo. The ladies are still bringing it. I know people are still warming up to this cast, but one resounding thing that I keep seeing from everyone is they love Miami. They love the ladies. They love this mix of uh, this new reboot because, you know, we always always talk about what does a reboot look like? Miami was a reboot. It wasn't a complete recasting of the cast, but it was a reboot. We have a bunch of new housewives and we have housewives that were once housewives that are now friend does, but still I love the mix and I love that you don't really see a definitive line. Oh, this is just a housewife. No, we're getting a full story even from Adriana. Marisol, not so much, but Marisol is hosting an actual event in this particular episode. This is only episode two, but I'm so glad that these women are back. You know, it's a season filled with drama, fun, Miami style. I'm, I'm enjoying it. This is only episode two. And as I sat down to watch this second episode, I was like, this is really, this is a really good season. Nothing too crazy. We know that some people do not like each other, but I'm enjoying Real Housewives of Miami this season. Are you? Let's get into a countdown and then let's get into this recap because there's been a lot of technical stuff that I've been dealing with while away when I'm not in my own studio, but even when I'm in the studio, I don't know what's going on with some of these updates that are happening with the iOS and StreamYard or this one or that one. So we've been having a little bit of a tech issue. Hopefully, whatever's going on in the planets, hopefully it will, will resolve itself. So let's get into a Real, a Real Housewives of Miami recap for Season 6, Episode 2. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe because it is subscribers only live chat. So let's go. Baby, baby, won't you listen to me? I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer. Just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse, you make a fire, I'll add the fuel, follow my lead, just watch the shoes, gotta turn the heat up, to get this cool. Welcome back to the Campire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on breaking news like we did last night. We had that um, Kiki Palmer story that we posted. I actually covered that video last night, but because of the time difference, I'm still adjusting to all of that to only to get back adjusted to our Eastern Standard Time. But I did post a Wendy Williams story yesterday. Literally, I had finished that video and I was supposed to, well, I did meet up with um, some of you, Norma, Judy, um, Nadine, yesterday. So shout out to them. Happy belated birthday to Judy, who is one of our King's Guards here on the channel. So before I left, I was I was on a phone call, but I had to meet with them. And I forgot to 
public or publicize, I should say, or publish the Wendy Williams story. So if you missed the Wendy Williams story that I posted yesterday, be sure to check that out. Go give it a like, go give it a comment. So I completely forgot to post that. But then when I came back, I was like, oh, I have to eat something. Then I saw that Kiki Palmer story was blowing up on social media. So be sure to check out. This is why it's also important to follow us on places like TikTok and Instagram, because even if I don't do a full length video, I am probably doing a short form video on those platforms. So everything The Empire on all platforms, including X, formerly Twitter. If you're just joining us, guys, this is our Real Housewives of Miami recap. I know you're probably thinking like, Kempire, are you going to recap Miami? Look, I prioritize certain recaps based off of what I'm doing, but I'm also trying to balance, you know, being in L.A. and doing everything. I didn't realize how many people I know in L.A. <laughs> or how many things I had to do in L.A. But if you are in L.A., we are going to do a impromptu meetup on Sunday at 1 p.m. PST here at the Beverly Hills something gardens. I'm going to post it on the community tab, but it's the Beverly Hills Park over here by the hand, like the peace and love hand that that's here over in Beverly Hills. So we're going to do a meetup on Sunday. So be sure to check out the community tab here. I'm going to post it on all the socials and things like that today at some point, but Beverly Hills Park, that's not the official name, but Beverly Hills Park at 1 p.m. PST on Sunday. All right, it's going to be an impromptu meetup of subscribers. If you follow me on TikTok, if you follow me on YouTube, I'll be posting everywhere so that you guys know. All right, so let's get to this episode of The Real Housewives of Miami. I thought it, again, was a solid episode. It's only episode two. I can't believe it. I feel like, I, maybe because it was BravoCon weekend, so I just feel like there's just been so much content, so many like housewives, but sidebar. Speaking of The Real Housewives of Miami, I did see um, Marcus at, at the, the Miami panel. I, I did attend that. I also tried Julia's um, preservative or her preserves or something like that. I don't know what it was. All I know, whoever was working her booth, she was there. There was a line for it. I'm standing in line talking to someone and the guy's giving out samples. And I tried it and I said, this is delicious. <laughs> Cause you know, she has like her farm and things like that. So apparently she has, this is how you find out at BravoCon that these housewives do have businesses. So I was just like, this is the, like, it was so delicious. I was not about to wait online to get one though. It, the line was long cause she was there. I should have went back. There were a couple things that I should have went back to get like Dr. Wendy Acefo's candle. Cause that smells really good to get a happy Eddie t-shirt. I, I, I have my regrets. Okay. Um, and Julia's preserve thing. Oh, I should damn it. So mad about that. But I think you can order it online. So I might just do that when I get back to New York. So, and Julia is gorgeous in person. A lot of these housewives are gorgeous in person. They're, I don't think there's a housewife I've met that you're like, ugh. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, and, and not that I would necessarily say to, to the public, <laughs> maybe to my friends. But no, for the most part, no, they're really, really pretty in person. All right. At the top of this, we see that Lars is getting some sort of delivery of this elephant that looks like it's it's a green elephant. You know, you know I want one, right? Where the hell am I going to put that? Where the hell am I going to put that <laughs> in, New, in a New York City house? Um, but I love it. I love it for her. I don't know. How do you guys feel about Larsa and Marcus's relationship? There's something about that relationship that doesn't feel 100% to me. And I'm not one of those people that believe, oh, she's trying to get into Michael Jordan's, uh, trying to get back at Michael Jordan, or she's trying to get into the riches of Michael Jordan. Maybe, but I don't believe that either. I don't know. Maybe because last season, remember she had that little weird fake date at the very beginning of the season? I was like, Larsa, are you playing? Are you doing this to us now? Bringing fake guys on here to have some sort of housewife storyline? I don't know if that's what's happening with her and Marcus. Because why not? Why wouldn't they be together? He's a good looking guy. She's a good looking woman. Why not? But it, something feels off. I don't know what it is, but my instincts are never wrong. I'll just say that. My instincts are never wrong. And I and that was put to the test this weekend with some of the people that I met. I was like, mm, my instincts are never wrong. That's why I stay to myself. <laughs> but shout out to um, Brooke Ashley, who I met. Taria, who I was hanging out with at BravoCon. Um, I met Rodney the Voice at BravoCon. I met, um, there were, oh my God, there were so many people. I apologize. Chris. I met at BravoCon Alexander. They have um, like a podcast together. I met them. I saw them a couple of days, actually. Um, I'm trying to remember everyone that I met. There were a lot of people. There were a lot of, a lot of content creators and things like that that I met. 
at BravoCon, but there were also some that I didn't get to see. Oh, I met one half of the Bravo docket, Ceci, I met her. Uh, we're going to do something, so stay tuned, guys. We've been talking about doing something for a while now. There are a lot of people that we've been talking about doing something for a while that is just figuring it out, you know? All right, so let me focus. This is not about BravoCon. <laughs> Real Housewives of Miami. So the elephant. I love it, okay? Um, Adriana visits Jody's renovated... Oh, first off, Dr. Nicole calls the ladies because she wants to plan a um, just a smaller group because, you know, the newbies, along with Adriana have formed a friendship so she wants to have a smaller group meeting to kind of figure out what's going on with Geardy because she was you know up and down with her emotions at Alexia's party so she's she's planning that Adriana because as you know Jody Lisa Hochstein's boyfriend moved into Adriana's old house but he renovated it, and you know we love to look at homes and of course Adriana goes there and she's like I like, you know, I like my my style better because she sort of kind of kept to the traditional part of what made the house the house. You know, some people are like that with their renovations. They don't want to completely gut a place. They want to kind of keep it to the original aesthetic. But no, he made it modern. He made it more Miami. I prefer his style, to be honest with you. And I love the fact that Kiki later points out in regards to what I've been thinking about Lisa moving on so quickly after a 15-year marriage. But we should also keep in mind, I think a lot of people forget that maybe this marriage was over a lot a lot longer, a longer a time ago before they actually, because I think Lisa would have stayed married to Lenny. I don't think she truly loved Lenny like that. I think she loved the lifestyle. I think she got into the marriage because of the lifestyle. I think this next chapter is about love for her, although money is important. Money is important. I do think that, you know, she's, she, she's going in a different direction this time. She's choosing differently, all right? So Adriana goes over there. She, she, Jody's giving her a tour. Jody's very different than Lenny. Lenny was a prick. <laughs> Come on, Lenny's trash. You know, we last season we kept on reminding you Lenny is trash. Lenny was trash. We knew Lenny was trash. He was a different type of guy. We know that Lisa probably just stayed in that relationship because... Okay, 15 years. Now we have two children with each other. The lifestyle. Okay. So she accepted a lot, I believe. She accepted a lot, including those parties. All right? And I think she turned a, turned a blind eye to a lot of what was going on. So um, she, they get a tour of this house. Jody's very different. He seems soft-spoken. He seems sweeter. She says this is the first time that she's ever felt, you know, really, really celebrated and loved by someone. But, you know, as I said before, Kiki says in, in a later scene that she just hopes it's not a rebound because this is a very this is a lot too soon. And you're literally in the middle of a contentious uh, divorce. All right. So we're, we're getting a, 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 a tour of that. Juliana, Juliana, Julia joins joins them at at Jody's house. And she talks about why she was calling out Marisol because she feels like Marisol is a pot stirrer. And we know Marisol is a pot star, but I really do love Marisol on this show. I know some of you are like, Kempire, do you still believe that she doesn't have a drinking problem? Well, I am running with it. Until she admits to having something, I am running with, she's doing it for comedy relief. Because she is my comedy relief. I love me some Marisol. She is so funny. All right? Do I always agree with her? No. Is she a pot star? Yes. <laughs> she understands the assignment. Okay. <laughs> Larsa, Kiki, and Alexia are working out together. Of course, Marisol's not there with them, but they do FaceTime with her at some point. Kiki, she's also really, really great. Kiki is giving me so many really funny moments in her confessionals. All right. She's giving me so many. At one point, because, you know, she falls off the exercise ball. The medicine ball? I forgot what they call that. So she says, I squeeze balls and I suck balls. I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> um, so Alexia's storyline this season is that maybe there's some trouble in paradise with her and Todd. And at first I was like, Alexia, are you reaching for a storyline this season? Is this what you're choosing to use as your storyline this season? I really hope not. 
But then I thought to myself, well, maybe it's not necessarily a storyline. Maybe it's just a pre-produced, just to emphasize, yes, there is some trouble. And I think, honestly, after seeing that scene with Alexi and Todd, I think Todd doesn't really like being on the show. I think until you're on the show, until you're in the middle of this Bravo universe and the fandom and people digging up stuff on you and exposing you and doing this and talking about you and in your comment section, I think that's what he's trying to avoid. I think he honestly does not want to really do too much. He doesn't want to be in these group scenes. He doesn't want to be the laughing stock. Alexia and Todd last season got roasted, rightfully so, specifically Alexia. But I think this season she wants to turn it around because so many people turned on her last season because she was obnoxious last season. This season, not so much, but it's only episode two. But we see who you are, Alexia. We do. We do. So they, they, she says that Alex, she says that she was upset that Todd wasn't there and she shouldn't use the word divorce. So Kiki's just like, you know, I was a little concerned when you used the word divorce. So she says, you know, she knew that the group was going to assume the fact that Todd wasn't there, that or maybe I, I don't know if I would jump to divorce the fact that Todd wasn't there. Would you? I don't know if I would jump to that. I don't think people just up and divorce. You just got married and you were with Todd for such a long time before getting married. Um. But then Kiki, because Kiki, look, she's she's trying to get that flute for next season. <laughs> Her mojito, I should say. She says that um she brings up what Adriana said in the car about, oh, you know, Alexia likes the status with Todd and blah, blah, blah. And here's the thing. I didn't like the, that after it seemed as if Adriana and Alexia made peace, that Adriana was stirring the pot and, and starting trouble. But she understands the assignment when it comes to these reality shows and what you're supposed to do, I guess. So Kiki brings it up, and so Adrian, so Alexia is like, "See, this is why I can't with with Adriana, and I can't blame Alexia, because if we just made peace, you came in wearing a, a peace and love outfit and waving the white flag. You really weren't waving a white flag. You're a devil. <laughs> Where's my sound machine? You're a devil. But look, do I like Adriana on the show? Yes. Shout out to Adriana's stylist, who I met." She watches the content. Carol, Wagwan Cistern. She's from Trinidad, too. So. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to tell her here. Carol was eating a sandwich. I went up to her to say hello because she had she had um, come up to me at one of the panels. And I was recording a panel for you guys. And I couldn't really talk with her. So I, I went up to talk with her. So she's talking. And a little bit of her mustard got on my outfit and ruined my shirt. Carol, you owe me a shirt. <laughs> But Carol does is her stylist. She she also knows Garcelle really well as well. But she doesn't style Garcelle. Stop it. Um, but she but all the beautiful looks that we're seeing with Adriana this season, her confessionals, is Carol, a beautiful Trinidadian woman. Carol has her own style. But I, you know, I've been telling you, I've been loving Adriana's style and her confessionals. Like she's been bringing it, and she brought it at BravoCon, and she's bring, she's been bringing it this season. So that's all Carol. Carol, come on now. <laughs> uh, so shout out to Carol. But yeah, so Adriana is doing what she is supposed to do as a friend of a pot stir. Her and Marisol are, are the pot stirrers, okay? Do I agree with it in real life? Hell no. I didn't I didn't like that. As soon as she did, I was like, I was like, didn't you guys just make up? <laughs> Can we just have a moment of you just being in being good for a hot second? Apparently not. Apparently not. So Larsa and Marcus, so they start talking about their podcast, like their scenes to me. I'm not that interested, to be honest with you, but they start talking about, you know, they have their podcast. I don't know. Do you guys even listen to it? Every once in a while, it makes news because they're talking about their relationship. They're talking about how Michael Jordan reacted to their relationship that he doesn't approve. I don't know. Um, but she also brings up possible engagement and marriage and the timeline for that because she sort of like throws it in there like maybe we should talk about that on the podcast so he says that you know he's really spent a lot of time focused on not being in his father's shadow and and that's real i get that michael jordan's your dad yeah i get it so she's i'm actually surprised because she just got divorced last season but i don't know do you think that she really wants to marry this this man and Marcus doesn't have any kids. I don't know. Like, for, I think that's a real conversation that, that, that needs to be had. Instead of these conversations about a podcast, 
like these conversations I want to see you guys have about children and things like that. Like, do you want to have children one day? It's not impossible. I mean, physically, I don't believe Larsa can carry at this point in her life, but they have surrogates and things like that. I don't know. Like, those are the conversations I want to see you guys having. These other shallow conversations I could care less about. But anyways, we, we do focus in this episode on how Larsa seems to be obsessed with Marcus and she's doing a welcome back party, even though he was just there. And the group is just like, girl, stop. You guys are annoying. <laughs> I think you're annoying for other reasons. All right. So Lisa's on her way. She's on the phone with Jody. I don't know how Jody does it because, I mean, God bless him because she, Lisa could be annoying. She talks about them being annoying. Lisa herself could be annoying because I know she's always complaining about Lenny and rightfully so all the things that she's going through. But to be in a relationship and always talk, talking about your ex, that's challenging. I hope she finds a balance on not talking about it too much to Jody. Because it, that's, I don't know, like you want someone to be there for you and support you. But once this divorce is over, it makes me wonder if what could happen in, re in regards to your relationship. But she's on her way to a hearing because she wants to fight to get some sort of temporary support. But she gets good news on her way to the hearing that Lenny has agreed to pay $8,000 in temporary support a month for them. She has two kids with him. She's fighting the prenup. I think she should fight the prenup because of the way that Lenny just dogged her out with this other woman. And I don't want to hear from the other woman. She's always on social media, in the news. And I, like, we don't want to hear from you, girl. Mind your business. Sidebar. <laughs> Kiki says, at, I think it was at, yeah, it was at the Marisol's gay brunch where she was just like, I saw um, the mistress's ex-husband. <laughs> I should she's like I'm that type of friend I will go I will date him because apparently they say he's a really nice guy what did okay sidebar because I can't remember all this because I'm really not that interested in Lenny or the um mistress but it makes me wonder did she also cheat on her ex-husband I think so right woo 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 <laughs> to the ex-husband. I want to see the ex-husband, actually. Is he good looking? I'm just asking. Anyways, I really could care less about Lenny. I just want, I mean, I would love for Lisa to, to, to get the home, but we already know that she does not get the home. Lisa does not get the home. She does move out, but I still want her to get, get your money, Lisa. Get your money. You got two kids with that man. And I did see a recent photo of Lenny's mom with the, the new the new woman. And we already said this last season, Lenny's mom, I believe he takes care of the parents. So I feel like and at the end of the day, that's his mom. So there's always going to be loyalty to to Lenny. But I also think it was like monetary. Anyways. All right. Um, Marisol has her gay brunch. I love scenes with Marisol. She's just so funny and kooky. And I, I love the little disco ball um, party favors and things that she's doing. Um, so she, she, I didn't realize, it's so weird though that they're filming this scene. It, it felt like they were film, filming this separate scene with the Geerty, Nicole, Juliana, Juliana, why I keep saying Juliana? Julie, Julia, <laughs> not Julie. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna need you, Ju Julie, Julie, <laughs> Julia, to be more interesting for me to remember your name. That's, and Adriana. Uh, oh, maybe because Juliana, maybe that's why I do it because they're so, Okay, maybe that's why I do it. But at least I correct myself in the... Like, I don't just do it and, and forget that I'm doing it, that I'm saying it wrong. Anyways, so it felt like they were filming that one at night and then we're having this gay brunch. I don't know. You just never know the timeline, but we know that they're having separate parties right now. I kind of would have loved to see the entire group at Marisol's gay brunch, but we know she doesn't see it for Adriana, so she's not going to invite them. All right. So that's that's when Kiki talks about seeing the mistress's ex-husband and that, that she would date him just just for her friend, Lisa. But she's also worried that Lisa is might be on a rebound with with Jody. All right. So Alexia reassures the group that everything is good with her and Todd. I know she I came out and said, you know, we're not getting a divorce. And, you know, he didn't come to the party because whatever reason, like she really doesn't get a solid reason. I think he just doesn't want to be on camera as much, especially with the group. 
I don't think it's anything personal with the group. I think it's more so having to do with the show. But they can't say that. They can't say that on the show, unfortunately. So the, the group also at this party talks about how obsessed Larsa is with Marcus. Marcus FaceTimes. And then she's like, oh, we're going, I want to invite you guys. We're going to have a, a welcome back party. And the girls are like, he was just here two days ago. What do you mean a welcome back party? And she has like no explanation for, well, yeah, you know. And <laughs> Okay, Larsa. All right. Um, but as I said before, Kiki brings up like uh, her concern for Lisa and she's hoping that this is not some sort of rebound. And Lisa says that, you know, she's never been loved like this before. We know it. She spent 15 years with Lenny. Lenny has never probably loved on Lisa like Jody has. I don't think we've ever seen a scene where like, oh, he really loves her. He seemed annoyed with her back when the show was originally on. But it, I think they stuck in this marriage because she put up. She put up with him probably cheating. I, I really do believe that. I don't know that for a fact. But I do believe that she put up with him cheating. And he just decided after a while, like, I want something new. And he wanted to be done with her. Which is sad. She's got two kids with you. I'm like, Lenny's trash. <laughs> like, that's all I can say. Lenny's trash. And I'm happy that Jody is there for her, even if it's a rebound. I know we hate to say that it might be a rebound. But it could be a rebound for two years. I mean, I want it to work out for her and Jody, but this is very, very soon after getting. You're not even out of the marriage yet. You're not even out of the marriage yet. So they also talk about the issues that Lars is having with Geerty at the dinner with Geerty, Adriana, and, and Julia, and Dr. Nicole. They also talk about those issues. But th at this particular dinner, Geerty is getting ready to tell the group that she's been diagnosed with breast cancer, stage one breast cancer. But before that, they run into Emilio Estefan. As you know, last season, we saw that he was going to be working with Adriana on some new music. Here's the thing. Adriana's song, Fire, and the other song, the theme song, great. Is she going to have a really big career? I mean, I say never say never. Never say never. I know a lot of times these housewives, they start with music and they don't, it really doesn't become much of anything. I feel like Candace has really kind of been one of the rare ones to actually go off and actually have some sort of music career. I can see that with Adriana, especially when you have someone like Emilio Estefan behind you. And now the song that she's recorded with him that was meant for uh, uh, Cam Camila Cobello. So good for her. I mean, Amelia was a, a huge guy in, first of all, in Miami, but also in music. You know, he's the mastermind behind a lot of Gloria Stefan's hits. So good for her, right? I'm happy for her. Even if it's just a one-off. Because we have to keep, her, keep in mind that Adriana is no idiot. Like, she's a very educated woman. She's no dummy. So the fact that she's leaning towards just doing music, I'm like, God, you have so much, you have so much education. But if this is your passion, this is what you want to do in your life. You're on this type of platform. People will listen to your music. Why not? And and Emilio's no fool. He's like, you're on a, a, a popular TV show and we can get some we can make some money off of because he will end up making the money because he's the one writing and producing this music. I don't know if Adriana does any of the writing. If she does, I hope she does get some writing credit, Adriana, so you can get money for perpetuity and please and please do not write um give bravo the rights to all of that just saying i wonder if she because doesn't she isn't um her song the theme song of miami i hope i hope you didn't sign off your rights to that juliana juliana adriana i wouldn't be surprised you know we were just talking a few months ago about i forgot her name she was on star and some of the songs that she wrote for that show she doesn't get any residuals because she signed off on a contract that she doesn't get rights for, even though she is a writer. That sucks. Adrian, I hope you didn't do that. <sighs> Anyways, so Geardy does finally tell the women and, that she has breast cancer stage one, but it's invasive. And, you know, she's just trying to get it out. It's a hard thing to say. I Look, I've never been in that position. So it's a hard, first of all, English is not her first language. So Geerty does have a hard time expressing herself. And she says this to Larsa in the, that last scene. And so she finally gets it out. And I love that these, these are the moments that I love Adriana. She's like, it's our time to be there for you. 
And I love that these group of women are going to support her in this moment. And I believe the other women will as well. Because there, there, really, there really isn't this clear divide in the group. Because I really do feel like Alexia and Marisol will support will support Geerty. And I think Larsa will as well. I don't think that Larsa and Geerty have that deep of an issue. I think they really, Lar at least Larsa, really wanted to make an issue of her calling her fake. We have to remember, she was asked a question. This is what happens to housewives all the time. They're asked these questions and then... It's, it spreads like wildfire through social media and the press, and they have to deal with it. And they have to deal with it again during the season. All right, and then once the season airs. So it's unfortunate. All right, um, Julia, sidebar. <laughs> we, have, we do have a sidebar with Julia. She's been engaged nine times. Are we supposed to be proud about that? And then her comparing it to... Um, to Martina's nine, Wil Wil was it Wil Wilmington um, titles? It doesn't compare. But okay, if you think it's cute. All right. <laughs> just saying, I'm just like, I mean, it's, it's not something to be ashamed of either, but at the same time, I'm just like, is it something to be proud about? I've been, I've been engaged nine times. Okay. <laughs> whoop de doo <laughs> I don't know. You guys tell me in the live chat. For those that are just joining us, this is our weekly recap of the Real Housewives of Miami. I'm doing this straight through. Like I said before, we've been having some technical issues while traveling. I don't know. I don't know. Is Mercury in retrograde? Can someone tell me? <laughs> Shout out to everyone watching the live chat. Shout out to our Team Kempire, Royal Court, and Senior Royal members of the channel. To become a member of the channel, head on over to teamkempire.com backslash join. Members are getting, an, they got the inside of BravoCon. So they also, they also get the heads up on a lot of stuff. None of those things are included in the perks. Those are all bonuses to being here on the channel. And we did a special get ready for me with me to go to bed when I was in Vegas that was available for Team Kempire and Royal Court members. But I'm going to make that unavailable and that will only be available for perpetuity for our senior royals. All right. So shout out to you guys that are members. And of course, shout out to our King's Guards. When I say King's Guards, you guys go hard for me. And I do not take that loyalty and respect and reverence lightly. I didn't realize it until like I've, I've met some of my King's Guards in person here, here in, here in California. You guys go hard for me. I appreciate that love and support, and I also appreciate because I hear this so often, and I do, and I don't like every time I hear it, I'm like, woo, telling me that I got you through a dark time in your life. That is like, cause I don't, I'm just here performing, <laughs> like I'm just here having a good time, and the fact that I'm able to give you some sort of solace or break or healing through just being myself that is a beautiful and amazing thing and that's the power of these types of platforms so i am so grateful that i can do that for others but hearing that from so many different people i can't tell you the people that i met at BravoCon, people i've met here in la that have said the same thing i'm just like oh that is transformative and i appreciate that so thank you thank you guys so much for that for those that are watching, if you like the video yet, liking the video is an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. Have you subscribed to the channel? Subscribe, because you're missing out on content. You're missing out on content. Just letting you know, you're missing out. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and make sure that you're still subscribed and make sure that your notifications are on and make sure that you are following us on TikTok, Instagram, and on Twitter. Everything is at the Kempire, at Kempire Daily, and at Kempire Radio. And I do need to do a special podcast episode. I don't know if I will have time this weekend. I'm trying to really see and do everything here in L.A. while I'm here and see everyone. We're doing, like I said before, a meetup here in L.A. on Sunday at 1 p.m. PST at Beverly Hills Park. That's not the official name. I will post all the official details on the community tab and on all of my social media. So I hope to see all of you there that live in the surrounding areas around Los Angeles. I know it's not easy getting around, so I appreciate it if you can make it. And I hope the next time I come, it will be with an official show for you, all of you to attend and a bigger heads up. Okay, moving on, moving on. Let's talk about, um, what are the other things that I want to talk about? Mm, I did see Alexia's best friend, Johnny. 
at BravoCon. So I was like, oh my God, I, it's so funny to see people that you recognize that you've seen on the show. I did see him. I love his little interaction with Kiki. He's like, I'm not wearing underwear. And then Kiki was like, do this. And he's like, you're going to see my, <laughs> he's like, that's why I asked you. Kiki, you're a mess. I love Kiki though. I love Kiki. I'm so glad that Kiki is an official friend Dove. Perfect. She's still bringing it. Um, I do want to see more of Kiki's personal story because I do think, I think we might get to see a little bit more of it this season. Okay. Alexi and Todd have a dinner. All right. We find out Alexia is still very much spoiling Peter. And here's the thing. I'm okay with Alexia spoiling Peter. I just feel as if, first of all, Peter's future wife, <laughs> good luck. But I think part of the reason why people get frustrated with Alexia and how she treats P Peter and spoils Peter, it's not because Peter is spoiled and he's not able to take care of himself at home. He's moved downtown Miami, so he's close by. They share a housekeeper so she can keep an eye on him. But she also wants to do his grocery shopping. And Todd's like, you're doing his grocery shopping? Like, none of that stuff bothers me. Here's the thing. It's because Peter then feels like the world needs to treat him the way that his mother treats him. Oh, and I didn't forget. Did we talk about this last season? I think we did. When Peter came into my comment section and I was talking about the problematic things that he said on social media about, oh my goodness, about the Peter Pan and, and uh, I think it was a black person playing, playing um, Tinkerbell. I can't remember the details. I don't remember if we talked about this last season when he came into my into my comment section. He's like, oh, maybe you should play Tinkerbell. I almost forgot about that, Peter. And look at me trying to give you grace. <laughs> look, look. But it's things like that that Peter feels as if he, the world, needs to fall at his feet like his mother does. That's where her spoiling him becomes a problem. Other than that, if he was a decent human being... I don't think people would care. Yes, he's spoiled. And yes, his future wife is going to have to deal with this man that expects certain things that his mother does. That's a whole other thing. But when you're not a decent human being, when you're beating up on homeless people, when you're getting in trouble, when you're doing other things that people have accused you of that we won't get into, that's where it becomes a problem. That's where it becomes a problem when your mother doesn't, you know, call you out on your BS and make you deal with the consequences of your actions. If, if she was just spoiling him and doing his grocery shopping and being in a lot of you uh, Hispanic moms can relate to a, uh, to Alexia in this. I'm OK with that. But when your son becomes a spoiled brat and he's a spoiled brat to the world, that's a different that's a different thing. So, Alexia, first of all, do you guys notice what Alexia said to the server? She's like, let's order everything now so you don't distract us. Oh, there, there's the real Alexia showing up. That's the real Alexia showing up. Let, let's get through all the things before I was like oh all right Alexia so Alexia and Todd talk about the issues that they're that they're going through this season it feels very much like a storyline but then I really thought to myself I think Todd does not want to be on camera especially when it comes to these group scenes because the last group scene even though I kind of want to see them do that what did they call it last season with when they met with the husbands I forgot what they called it there was an official name I kind of want to see that scene again I don't know if we're going to get that scene again because Todd is sort of like checked out but I don't blame him I think he really does not want to be on this show you know he's used to his private life and now that he's been on the show it, he's, probably, he's probably like I need to pull back I need to pull back I don't real feel like any issues that Alexia and Todd are going through are not resolvable but me I could be wrong because according to Adriana, when, when everyone was leaving the party, they ran into Todd. And Adriana is confirming, she, he's like, I have no issues with you, Adriana. You're not the issue. And she was like, referring to his marriage, he's like, you hit the nail on the head. That there might be marriage issues. Maybe there really are. I don't know. I mean, sometimes marriage does change people when you get into it it's a little bit different when you're dating and everything's just free and blah, blah 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 you add that marriage title and certain people in the in the marriage expect certain things now that we're married only for us to find out later in the season that there might be some financial issues we shall see we shall see all right larsa and geardy so we end this episode with larsa and geardy i i just find it so funny that I'm talking this long. I didn't talk this long about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills yesterday. If you missed our recap of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, be sure to check that out. And it's not that Beverly Hills was bad yesterday. It's just maybe there's just more to cover because there's just more happening. Yesterday, I didn't, I didn't have that much to say about their Vegas trip. 
but it's still early in the season. All right, there's still more to unpack. So if you missed our Housewives of Beverly Hills recap, be sure to check that out. All right, so Larsa and Geerty sit down. Both, I have to say, I was I was distracted because they're both arriving. The fashion is fashioning. The colors are are popping. The ladies look great. They're coming to sit down for the sit down. Uh, and we, it, the vibe of Miami is just there. All right, and the way it's edited, perfect. So they sit down. As you know, they had their issues, and Geerty got emotional the last time she saw saw Larsa. Larsa already Larsa. Larsa is dealing with something in regards to her emotions. She's like, what we're not going to do is no no crying. And Gary's like, you're not going to set any boundaries for me, especially because you don't know what she's going through. And people have already warned you, Larsa, that maybe she's going through something. Johnny said it to you. It's like, maybe she's going through something and you're already telling her that she can't cry. Larsa, I, and I wouldn't like that either. Like you're setting a boundary. You can't cry. You have no idea what I'm going through and you're setting about. I can't even, I like, I hope you're not like that with, with your kids because you need to allow space for, for your kids to express themselves. But I will say this, and we've talked about this recently is that I forgot who we were talking about. Oh, Cy from Browsewise of New York, that she probably gives her kids more grace than she gives other females or other adults. Maybe, maybe. So, Larsa and Geerty have a conversation. She says that boundary, no crying. Geerty's like, no, we're not going to do that. So Geerty, you know, she tries to explain her. Geerty, Geerty does have a hard time explaining herself. But we also have to keep in mind that English is not Geerty's first language. All right? And look, even if it was, some people just do have a challenge communicating sometimes, especially emotional things. Especially because there is something that she wants to share with Larsa. And I think she's going to share it with her in this conversation. She doesn't in this episode, but she does share her frustration with Larsa from last season. Because if you remember last season, she she kept on trying to shut Geerty down when she was trying to share her side. She's like, well, you've never been through a divorce and blah, blah, blah. Doesn't mean she can't share her perspective. Don't try and shut me down. And it might be, again, bigger than what we're seeing in the scene. It's more about the show. She's a newbie. Larsa feels like I'm an OG, blah, 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 blah. All right. But I get it. Lar- Lar- um, Gary's is like, don't try and shut me down. And I don't think the whole thing about her calling her fake, it's bigger than that. It's bigger. It's more about the show. It's more about how Larsa and maybe the the OGs have been treating Larsa, um, treating the newbies on the show. So I think it's more about that. And she starts getting emotional and she hasn't told Larsa yet what she's going through. And she does say, like, English is not my first language. She's like, well, English is um, not my family's first language either. Like, I know multiple languages. And she's like, that's different. That's your family. That's not you. On some level, on some level, because even if her, even if Larsa was born here, maybe in her home, she didn't speak English first. I don't know. I'm trying to give Larsa some grace. Maybe English wasn't her, you know, first language that she learned. But Larsa does communicate better than Geerty. All right. In a way, in a way, because I think she's also emotionally immature in a lot of ways, too. But Geerty, I just want Geerty to get it out. And I think next week we will see Geerty finally tell Larsa that she has breast cancer and that she is going to need her support. We, we shall see. Larsa has this kind of ice queen coldness to her. But I always remind you guys on how, how Larsa showed up for Lisa and I kind of want to see her, I apologize, this is, I, I don't know if you guys can hear what I'm hearing, but LA. <laughs> and I have the um, screen door open. Anyways, um, she showed up for Lisa and that's the Larsa that I'd like to see. And I think that that's the Larsa we're going to see show up for Geerty. I do want to say this because we did find out at BravoCon, you know, a lot of people like we didn't find out anything at BravoCon. The biggest and best news that we found out at BravoCon was that Geerty is cancer free cancer free and she just rang the bell for her last radiation treatment on wednesday so congratulations to geardy i'm glad that at least we have this happy ending to what we're going to see play out during the season doesn't mean that it's still not going to be an emotional season to see the journey that geardy goes through so that was good news guys if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. Be sure to check out some of the stories that you missed yesterday, including our Wendy Williams story and her ex-husband. 
And we posted a story about the Kiki Palmer situation. She has filed for a temporary restraining order, which she has gotten. She's gotten a, a temporary restraining order that until her hearing in December. Uh, so check that out. Also, her mom is speaking out. All of that we covered in that particular story. And of course, be sure to check out our shorts here on YouTube. Be sure to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and on X, aka Twitter. Everything is at The Kempire. And for our podcast, for our merch store, head on over to thekempire.com. Shout out to our King's Guard. Shout out to our channel members to become a member of the channel. Head on over to teamkempire.com backslash join. And of course, shout out to all of our subscribers and shout out to all of you that have been patient with us with rolling out this content. We appreciate it. Everyone have a great rest of your Friday, right? <laughs> I will see you all in the next video. And again, if you're in LA, I will be posting about our meetup on Sunday at 1 p.m. PST. See you guys later. Bye, y'all. I got the fuse, you make a fire I'll ask you, follow my lead